Okay, uh, Mr. Yao, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm calling from Toronto, Canada, so it's my morning. Uh, I am extremely excited to do this session. So my name is Stephen, uh, otherwise known as Kwabna Mwa. And so um, I'm extremely excited to like, you know, talk about LinkedIn and how it could be beneficial for everybody on this call. Um, so for some context, uh, I was in Ghana for the first time ever uh, this past December. And, um, you know, I was in Kumasi and, you know, Yao definitely showed me around. And I was really, I was really in... Oh, sorry, if everybody can go on mute, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I was really inspired when I went to Ghana. Um, and then Yao definitely showed me around, but then I also talked about, you know, the uh, the entrepreneurial scene within Kumasi. And so uh, Yao and I discussed that, you know, um, in terms of how we can progress our community and, you know, the, uh, the, the folks within, you know, the uh, Asante tribe, it will be good if we talk about, you know, LinkedIn, how LinkedIn can be beneficial to help, you know, you folks grow in terms of your business, grow your network as well for like, you know, uh, networking opportunities. If you're looking for a new job, how that can be helpful, but then also for skill development. So LinkedIn is a really powerful platform. And so I've been at LinkedIn now for five years. And so um, this is going to be the first of, I believe, three sessions we're going to be doing over the next three months uh, to talk about how to use LinkedIn better for, you know, whatever. Um, Mr. Adams, can you please go on mute? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so I am going to get started. And so if everybody can just please go on mute. Uh, yeah, oh God, I really appreciate it. And so, yeah, I've been on LinkedIn for five years now. And so um, it's a really powerful platform, really, really powerful as a way to, you know, get connected with different people all across the world. So I actually got connected to Yao through my contact at LinkedIn. And so that goes to show you how powerful the network is. And so for today, we're going to be going through how to, you know, set up your LinkedIn profile. Okay. And then also number two, um, we're going to talk about how you can use it for whatever you want to do, whether it's, again, uh, getting new skills, uh, meeting new people that can help you in your business or for finding a new job. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and then uh, we can get started. Okay. So the, the whole context today is again, more so for how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. That's gonna be the first start because once you have a good LinkedIn profile, that is when you're gonna be able to, you know, use LinkedIn to really find new people to network with. And then also how you can, again, develop new skills. So this is the agenda for today. So we've already covered the introduction. We're going to talk about number two, building your LinkedIn profile. Uh, number three, being able to build out your professional network. Um, and then also using your network to connect to different opportunities. And then we're going to end off with a question and answer segment. So for some of you that, that may not know, you know, what is LinkedIn? So LinkedIn, it's a, it's a global platform, okay? And really the vision of LinkedIn is to really connect economic opportunity for every member in the global workforce, okay? Now, what does this even mean? This means we want to create economic opportunity, aka, you know, help people make money, okay? And that's for every professional person in the global workforce, okay? Now, what does that even mean? Uh, a step further. So whether you are, you know, uh, 16 years old, you're a student, you're trying to understand what skills you should be getting for the professional world, uh, LinkedIn has a purpose for you. Whether you are, you know, 21 years old as a nurse and you're trying to, you know, find a new job, LinkedIn has a purpose for you. Whether you're an entrepreneur trying to grow your business, LinkedIn has a purpose for you. So literally everybody that is a professional, LinkedIn's ultimate job or ultimate goal is to help, you know, every professional uh, be have access to economic opportunity. Uh, and as I mentioned, LinkedIn is a global platform, okay? So right now we're almost at 900 million members globally, okay? So every country, there's a, there's a LinkedIn presence, okay? 60 million companies that are on LinkedIn, 
okay? Um, and there's over 39,000 squad skills that you're able to access within the LinkedIn platform. And currently there's over 23 open million jobs. So LinkedIn is also the largest um, uh, platform for jobs. Uh, every second we have, sorry, every minute we have three net new members that are hired to the LinkedIn platform. So it's an amazing opportunity for you to really like, you know, um, identify companies you want to work for and then, you know, be able to apply on the LinkedIn platform to get, you know, that next job. So if you think about it, LinkedIn actually is the only platform that has the digital economy, okay? So it's gonna show you, you know, what are the fastest growing skills that you should be knowing about? So for example, uh, chat GPT and like, you know, um, uh, artificial intelligence, that is right now an emerging trend and an emerging skill, right? And so if you know that that's an emerging skill to have right now, LinkedIn will then highlight that and it'll say, hey, maybe you should take these LinkedIn learning courses about how you can become a, a chat GPT or an AI expert as an example. And so it's gonna call out and forecast what are the skills needed for the future, um, but then also um, show you and map you to what companies are hiring. So this is really the only place where you can understand the digital economy across the world. So what can LinkedIn do for you? So, I mean, ultimately it helps you do four things. So obviously it helps you connect to the uh, professional world. So again, over 900 million members, you are able to like, you know, connect with globally. Uh, you're able to develop your own personal brand and your voice. And so if you're an entrepreneur and you wanna be a thought leader and you wanna also like, you know, uh, you know have your brand presence up, um, LinkedIn is a perfect platform to do that. Uh, it helps you stay informed, okay? I think that, you know, um, just based on my experience working here at LinkedIn, um, this is a big opportunity being missed for people not using LinkedIn to be kept up to date with what is going on in the world, okay? So I love to use LinkedIn as to keep informed as to what's going on within Canada, you know, what's going on across, you know, North America, globally, or even like, you know, within Ghana. What is going on from a business or a professional standpoint so that I can be kept up to date and have, you know, uh, uh, conversations of substance with anybody else that may, you know, be an expert in that field, okay? Um, it's good that you, it's good to have an opinion on on most things that are relevant, right? And so, how you're able to have a formulated opinion is by being informed as to what is going on. And LinkedIn, from a professional context, is really helpful to help you do that. And then, lastly, LinkedIn helps you get hired and really build your career. Okay, so this is what we're going to spend most of our time on today: is how to build your professional brand, how to build a strong LinkedIn profile. Uh, as a foundation to using the platform. Okay, so um, this is just a, you know, a quick overview of somebody's LinkedIn profile, okay? So really it comes down to you know, five key points. So your, your profile picture, so your photo at the very top left, okay, your headline, okay? So what your headline is, you know, um, what is, what do you do, okay? And how are you adding value to the world? Uh, number three, it's your summary. So given context as to you know, who you are. Um, and then number four, the experiences as well. And so um, whether it's experience you know, at, at CSI or um, your experience within your own company or at any previous experience you've had. And then lastly, education, okay? So I'm gonna be going into each one in depth. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is you know, uh, this one over here, the profile picture. It's really important to have, you know, a good profile picture. I'll talk a little bit more about this after because it really, you know, humanizes you. It puts a face to a name, okay? And so uh, I encourage you to have a profile picture. Now, you want to have an appropriate one, of course, so, you know, one that is a headshot of you uh, because if an employer comes onto your LinkedIn profile, you know, you want to put your best foot forward. So it's really, really important. But then also in the, uh, the pre-read that I sent over to you guys over WhatsApp, uh, the majority of people spend their time looking at people's LinkedIn profile is on the top half, okay? So from the about section and up. So that means, you know, you should have a strong profile picture and a very, very strong about because that's where people are going to spend most of their time on, okay? Now, for the headline, uh, you want to have a, um, 
you want to have like a one sentence pitch, okay, as to like, you know, who you like, you know, your, your current job title. And then also, you know, what do you serve? What value do you provide? So for example, uh, me right now, I'm an account executive at LinkedIn. Okay. Now, what does that even mean? So in my profile that I'm going to share with you, you with you guys after, is I put, you know, I'm an account executive at LinkedIn. And then what that means is that I help salespeople win more business faster, pretty much. And so if I'm selling to like a big corporation, okay, and if a president were to look at my profile, he or she can get a clear understanding of what I do just based on my, you know, my 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 headline versus be only having account executive because that is like, what does that even, what does that even mean? And then for the about section, again, you want to be able to um, have context as to who you are, you know, uh, what value are you serving to the community? And then also number three, you want to be able to talk about a call to action. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you are passionate about, you know, any of these things as well. Other things within your LinkedIn profile that are also really important, okay? So uh, are the bottom half of your profile. So your volunteer experience, uh, the skills you have, any awards you have as well, okay? And then uh, any certifications or projects you've worked on. Volunteer experience is actually really, really important, okay? So if you are currently vol volunteering for CSI, put that in your LinkedIn profile. If you're volunteering for any organization, include that in your LinkedIn profile. The reason why is because it really helps to bring, um, it shows that you are well-rounded. Excuse me. It shows that you are a well-rounded person, but then also, um, it can also be a conversation starter, okay? If I were to, you know, uh, interview, let's say Mr. Adams as an example, and I noticed that he was a volunteer within CSI, naturally, I'm going to be curious. I'll be, I'll be asking him, hey, you know, I'm curious to know what is CSI, what did you do for them? So it really brings up a conversation starter and people naturally have a soft spot for people or for, yeah, for people that have volunteer experience. It just brings a conversation to a more like, you know, um, uh, a different tone and a, a, a more welcome and warm, you know, uh, perception. So if you have volunteered or if you're currently volunteering, put that in your LinkedIn profile because it really helps you uh, stand out. Skills. So as I mentioned, again, I'm just going to, you know, use uh, uh, artificial intelligence as my example or, you know, chat GPT. Uh, you won't put any relevant skills also within your LinkedIn profile. OK, um, the reason why is because, you know, again, if I'm an employer looking to hire somebody, I want to make sure that they have the, the, the relevant skills. So include that in your LinkedIn profile. It's going to help you also with the uh, LinkedIn search engine optimization. Any awards uh, and certifications and projects um, is also good to include because it helps bring you uh, social proof or it helps you know, to uh, bring some even some more credibility in terms of who you are uh, as a professional. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, uh, a really, really, really big piece is uh, recommendations. And so recommendations is probably the, the most underutilized uh, or uh, uh, yeah, underutilized section within the, your LinkedIn profile for a lot of people, okay? The reason why I love recommendations and why I encourage everybody to ask for recommendation, whether it's from your previous boss, your previous employer, your previous, you know, coworker, or even somebody that you went to school with, is because it helps bring, again, credibility to, your, to yourself and your skill set. So for example, um, I love having recommendations and asking for recommendations for any executive uh, or, or president that I, I work with, because if I get a, uh, a recommendation from Alan, who is a sales president, okay, and then if I go to another corporation tomorrow, if they come onto my LinkedIn profile and they see that, you know, Stephen has a lot of recommendations and from people that were his clients, it helps to build my credibility, okay? so. If you think about it like this, you know, if you go to Amazon and you're trying to buy a uh, product from Amazon and that, that product has, you know, zero reviews, you may be a you may be less likely 
to want to buy that product versus a product that has, you know, five or 10 or even 50 reviews. The one with the more reviews, especially the positive reviews, you may want to buy that more. So uh, consider that, you know, when you're building out your LinkedIn profile, make sure you ask people for recommendations. It really helps, you know, you stand out. Okay, so um, one thing to know is that, you know, um, your profile is, is more than just a resume. It really just talks, it's, supposed to, it's more so a story of who you are, okay? And so um, consider that, and again, I'll get into more detail as to, you know, some best practices for your personal LinkedIn profile. But yeah, it should just be a story. After somebody visits your profile, they should have a good understanding of who you are. And, you know, based on different, you know, images, uh, recommendations, reviews, uh, versus only having bullet points about your, your, your history, okay? That doesn't really tell a full story as who you are as a professional. Okay, and again, uh, have a headshot photo. So this is a good example of a headshot. And so like, you know, chest up, literally just a headshot, um, really helps you stand out, you know, for your LinkedIn profile, okay? All right, I'm gonna skip this. Okay, so yeah, we talked about the summary already. Now we're gonna talk about, you know, uh, how to build your professional network, okay? So uh, a fun fact is that 50% uh, of hires result from a personal connection, okay? Um, so this goes to show you that, you know, um, the cliche, your network is your net worth and, uh, you know, relationships are really, really important in life, okay? And having to having the right people around you is extremely, extremely important. So um, this stat is a true stat, and even for myself, right? I am working on LinkedIn because I knew somebody that used to work at LinkedIn. So the person that connected me and Yao together, uh, I met him at a networking event back in like 2017. And then um, when he was hiring for his team, uh, he reached out to me on LinkedIn to say, hey, Stephen, I have a opening on my team. Uh, I want you to interview. Okay, so that is how I got into the company is because I knew somebody. So in short, building your professional network is extremely important because, you know, people would give you different referrals or people would just, you know, tell you about different opportunities that may not be broadcasted, you know, to everybody. So when you're thinking about building out your professional network, okay, so um, think about, you know, your first degree connection is, you know, somebody that I know personally, okay? So for example, uh, Yao, I know Yao, right? So Yao would be in my first degree connection, okay? Now, the power of networking is that LinkedIn is also going to show you your second degree connections, okay? So I know Yao, okay, and then now Yao knows all of you. So all of you on this call, you'd be considered my second degree connection because uh, I don't know any of you, but I just know Yao. But after this call, then I will know you, okay? But again, this is the power of networking. And then the last bracket is the third degree networking, okay? So if I know Yao and Yao knows Mr. Adams, okay? Mr. Adams knows other people that I don't know as well. Okay, so it goes to show you that there's three levels of networking, okay, and that it's really, really powerful to start to grow your network because the, the more you grow your network, the more reach you have and people get to know you. Okay, so when you're thinking about expanding your network, um, how you should do it is based on a few different things. So I think the first point is you should, you know, um, reach out to somebody and connect with somebody based on something you have in common with them. Again, so if uh, I am a volunteer at CSI, I may want to connect to somebody else that is within CSI as well, okay? Um, you should also reach out to people who have a job or, or work at a company that interests you. So if, I, if, if my dream job is to work at Nike, okay, or OVO as an example, um, I may want to reach out and connect with somebody within Nike to say, you know, hey, Mr. Adams, I see that you work at Nike as a designer. Um, 
I'm interested to learn more about the company. Would you mind sparing 15 minutes of your time to let me know more about the, or the organization? Yeah. And then when you do reach out to somebody, uh, some best practices as to what you should say is, you know, introduce yourself, you know, who you are, so the, the, the context, um, but then also ask them, you know, how they can help you and how you can help them. So, you know, give and take. Um, here, I'm, I would love, you know, 15 minutes of your advice, um, but then I also want to share more about how I am thinking about the industry as well. Okay. And here's an example of, you know, a customized message you send out to somebody um, that you may not know right now. So, hi, Dan. I found your profile through a mutual connection, Rob. I'm currently exploring career paths in technology and admire your experience. I would love to join your network. Okay. So, when you're thinking about building out a professional network, okay, of course, you know, you definitely want to add your family and friends as a connection on LinkedIn. Uh, your current, you know, uh, co-workers or your former co-workers, and then also, you know, your current and your former managers. And then lastly, you, you should also add, you know, um, your people that went to the same school as you. So if you have any schoolmates, definitely add them on LinkedIn. It's extremely powerful because, you know, when I first got LinkedIn back in like 2012, uh, I was a student, right? But like now that I am, uh, it's like 11 years later, those same students from my high school are like now doing big things, right? So then if I need any help from somebody from, from Google or Amazon, I now know somebody that I went to high school with um, back in 2012 that can introduce me to different executives at Google or Amazon. So people that are your schoolmates, add them as well, um, because yeah, people's careers can go all different kinds of paths. And so you never know, um, you know, the future of, somebody's career direction. And then also you wanna be able to uh, explore alumni. So whether it's alumni from your, um, from your work, um, your current job or alumni from your volunteering opportunities or alumni from your, your school. So if, um, if you went to KNUST, for example, you can find people that used to, that are alumni from that university that you can now reach out to and connect with because uh, especially people from, you know, colleges and universities, they love giving back. And so if you just find, you know, people from KNUST and you reach out to them, they're going to be a lot more receptive and want to have a conversation with you to see how, you, how they can help you. Okay. Now we're going to talk about, you know, how you can, you know, leverage your network. So now that you have a good, strong profile, now that you uh, have added some people to your network, now we're going to talk about how you can use your network on LinkedIn to connect you to opportunity. Okay. So again, um, LinkedIn members are four times more likely to get hired when they're referred. So that referral um is extremely extremely important from somebody that you know yes so um if you so in this example over here if you're looking for a uh, a new job right so i don't know i'm going to use nike as my example um what i'm going to do is i'm going to find somebody that works at nike and then i'm going to ask them i'm going to let them know that i want to apply for nike and I'm going to ask them if they can share some information with me. So this is an example over here. She's trying to work for this company called Fix Dev. Sorry, Fix Dex. So she says, hi, Seth. Hope you're doing well. I, I saw that Fix Dex is hiring a communication specialist, and I'm very interested in applying. This role seems like a great fit for me because it, it's a need. It needs a self-starter who can operate within a complex environment. Would you be willing to share any information on the position, the team, and what they might be looking for in a candidate? I'd be greatly appreciative. So over here, she's just asking for more in intel or information about you know, the organization and also about the position so that it helps her you know, be well prepared for that interview. Okay, so really great way for you to uh, have the upper hand, especially if you're looking for a new job, how you can then you know, leverage this to um, 
uh, be prepared for that interview. Same way as if you are an entrepreneur, okay? And if I want to have, let's say, a potential partnership, okay, if I, if I have a clothing company and then I want to, I don't know, I want to have a partnership with a big clothing retailer in, in Ghana, for example, I'd find somebody, you know, that works at, I don't know, Walmart in Ghana on LinkedIn, and then I'd ask them for more information about how they choose different partners and retailers. So then when I do reach out to the right person, I have enough information to help me uh, be more likely to win over that opportunity to be featured in Walmart Ghana, as an example. And then lastly, you also want to follow different companies on LinkedIn. Um, so whether you are looking as an entrepreneur, looking for a company to partner with or even a company to sell to, you want to follow them on LinkedIn to get up to date as to what is going on. What, what are they sharing? Do they have any? So this word is, you know, being staying, staying informed is really critical. Being able to understand, you know, what they care about, any new developments that they have for the company. Um, but then also, if you're looking for a new job, be able to follow a company because that is where they're going to be sharing their jobs on their company page. Okay, so for whatever company that you're interested in working for or, you know, doing business with, uh, it's important to follow them on LinkedIn. Cool. So uh, that's about it for now on the LinkedIn profile session. Um, I'm going to share my screen and, and go through my LinkedIn profile to give you some more tips. Uh, I just want to just see if anybody had any questions real quick right now. Any questions? Okay, so if there's no questions, then I'm going to continue to share my screen. Okay. So um, this is my LinkedIn feed right now. So um, how I got here is I went to you know LinkedIn.com, and then I'm going to hit on my profile picture on the top right, and then we hit on View Profile. Okay. So um, over here, my background it just gives context as to you know um, my company and what I do. Okay, but then also over here, I have my headshot as I talked about, and then my headline right over here. So account executive at LinkedIn. Okay, again, uh, what does that actually mean? So that's why I put it in a colon and I put in, you know, working with sales teams to win more business faster. So a one sentence pitch as to the value that I can provide to different companies with, uh, within Canada. Okay, um, I also put in this little microphone feature as well within my profile. Um, just so people can understand how to pronounce my name, you know, Stephen Amor, uh, how to pronounce it properly. Okay. My about section is pretty concise and to the point, you know, uh, three different paragraphs. What am I passionate about? You know, uh, what do I do today at work? And then, you know, having, letting people know that they should reach out to me to, to discuss any of these two topics. Okay, so in my experience, I put in uh, what I do for work today, okay? And so, again, you want to tell a story. Your LinkedIn profile should tell a story about you. So notice here, I didn't put any bullet points like a resume. I just put in a paragraph talk, talking about what I do. So for example, over here I have, as a mid-market account executive, I lead a complete sales cycle and work with companies that have up to 100 salespeople. I serve my partners by understanding their business goals, identify what are their challenges and educate them on how virtual selling can help their sales team win more business faster. So it's a story about what I do today. Okay. I've also added different you know, uh, pictures as well, just to help the, uh, the search engine optimization within LinkedIn. Uh, I put in the school uh, that I went to as well. Um, so that I can I find different alumni from my university. 
Okay. Um, and then this is like my license system, my certifications. And so um, and I, I, I love LinkedIn learning as a way to develop my, my skill set. And so anytime I do like a LinkedIn learning course, it's now going to show up on my profile as to what course I listen to. So for example, um, you know, here's a LinkedIn learning course that I took recently called, you know, um, how to clearly write for a business audience. It was a good one. And so I've added it to my LinkedIn profile. Okay. Uh, my volunteering as well. I've included that in terms of my volunteering work. So that again, it's really a conversation starter uh, for anybody that wants to have, you know, a, a, a uh, you know, a conversation with me. They bring up, you know, hey Steven, I saw that you used to, you know, lead the the black inclusion group. What is that? And then it's a good way to just talk deeper about what I did for the, for the Black Inclusion Group and the impact I've had. Skill set, again, you want to be able to add that and have people endorse you. Okay, and again, the big piece is the uh, the recommendations. So asking people, whether again, your, your former boss or you know, your, 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 your student mate, your schoolmate, um, you know, your current coworkers, ask them for recommendation to help you Again, uh, tell a story as to how you are as a professional so that people can get a better understanding about you. Okay, and then uh, the last thing I wanna call out is the uh, the interest right over here. Okay, so you can follow, look, follow, so this is like the informed piece. How do you become informed as to what is going on uh, within your industry, but then also within you know uh, tech overall? So if I hit on show all, you know, the top voices. So I follow these seven people, like they're, they're considered to be uh, influencers within LinkedIn. So um, they share a lot of different insights regarding what's going on within sales, uh, what's going on within the tech industry as well. So I'm now able to be a lot more informed. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, I follow a lot of different companies that post, you know, a lot of different and interesting things. So, um, that helps me be informed as to what's going on within the sales industry as well. Okay. Um, I'm also part of different groups. And then I've subscribed to uh, a newsletter within LinkedIn as well. So the state of the labor market um, helps me be informed as to knowing, again, because LinkedIn has so much different data points globally, and we are the digital economy, understanding you know, what skills are gonna be in demand over the next year, um, what are companies looking for today, et cetera. So it's me become a lot more informed as well. Uh, and then yeah, following my, uh, my university as well, um, just to be kept up to date as to what's going on over there. The last thing I will mention is uh, I also follow I uh, hope we can find it. Yeah. So I love, uh, again, I love being informed, right? So I, I follow uh, the LinkedIn news page as well. And so every single day I'm being, um, it's a quick, you know, five minute video that I can now listen to. Not even, not even five minutes, probably about like two minutes that I can listen to as to what is going on in the world. So it shows me different things like, you know, um, insulin is going up, oh, sorry. Insulin is, the price of insulin is going down. So now I'm more informed about that. Uh, car payments is a huge issue right now. Um, you know, TikTok um, is now limits their teen screen time. So it's good for me to know. And so, yeah, literally being informed in a really effective way by subscribing to these different pages. So I now know what's going on in the world. All right, uh, that's all I have. Um, this section now is for questions and, and answers, so Q&A. So you come off of mute and uh, ask me anything. Right. Uh, thank oh yeah, we can't, we can't hear you. Thank you very much, Stephen. And, uh...
um, what questions do you folks have? Don't be shy. You can ask me, you can ask me anything. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, uh, marketers who uh, jump into your uh, inbox uh, now and then uh, to, to sort of come to you at, uh, with, with marketing that you may not, uh, you may or may not be interested in. Yeah, so are you so you're asking how do I how do I react to say marketers that reach out to me and I'm not interested in it? Yeah, how, how do you how, how do you uh, sort of build your profile in such that uh, you, you you can limit the, the uh, access to such a um, uh, network um, marketers? Some of them are nuisance. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, you you it is possible. So give me one second. I'm gonna because there's a new feature. Um on LinkedIn that helps you block out spam. So I'm gonna post it in the chat right now. I haven't used it yet, but uh, I have seen it. Um, uh, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. And yeah, maybe I can send this as a follow-up, but um, it is possible to really block out any unsolicited uh, marketing emails or marketing messages on LinkedIn. Um, it's all in your settings though, okay? So um, if you go to your privacy settings, you can then you know limit who can message you and, and like, you know, who is able to message you and who's not. And so maybe y'all yeah, can send us as a, um, as a follow-up in terms of how you can make right, sure you can right. that messages. Right, yeah, that would be great if you can change the group. Uh, in, the, in the WhatsApp group as well, so that people can follow up on that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the, the, the floor is now open. If, if you have any questions, anything that is lingering in your mind, um, uh, Stephen is a, a top executive on LinkedIn. So let's use the opportunity to ask questions uh, that, that, that they come up. And, and also things that uh, we've, we've been wanting to find out on LinkedIn. Uh, here's the opportunity. Uh, please do ask uh, a couple of questions. Yeah. If you are trying to ask a question, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hello. 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 I just want to know, um, does LinkedIn gives us the opportunity to learn? I mean, um, to upgrade ourselves on skills like that's virtually for free just as google does sometimes yeah so um so linkedin has um some free courses not everything is free um i i used to have the ability to give out linkedin premium for free but i don't have that access anymore um, but it is possible, and I can maybe find out and send it to, to the group what courses on LinkedIn are free because it's a great way to, um, you know, I, I, I use it often to upgrade my skills, right? And so the platform that I use, it's LinkedIn Learning. So I'm going to share my screen, and I'll show you an, an example. So yeah, the product that is called LinkedIn Learning. And uh, these are like, you know, courses that can range between uh, 10 minutes up to like, you know, two hours, okay? So if you're trying to advance your career within LinkedIn Learning, uh, you can now identify different courses based on what you're trying to get better at. So again, if I, if I just type in what is artificial intelligence as an example, it's gonna give me a, a bunch of different courses that I can now, you know, learn artificial intelligence, like the uh, the foundations of it. So it's called LinkedIn Learning, and I'll send over a link for what courses are, because some of the courses are free. Uh, some of them, uh, I think you have to pay. Um, and again, if I had the, op the ability to do so, I'd give everybody here a free LinkedIn premium, but I don't have that option anymore, unfortunately. So um, yeah, I'll do that as a takeaway. But yeah, as you can see here, uh, some of the courses that I've recently taken, you know, are, ones I really liked was, again, 
um, understand how I can write, write better for business, um, be able to have better emotional intelligence, uh, sales strategy and using artificial intelligence, how to communicate with a C-suite executive. So yeah, a lot you can learn on within LinkedIn Learning. Okay, thank you very much. And then another follow-up question. I am. I see that um, on the accounts of LinkedIn, they have a premium. Um, does it mean I have to pay for using? If I need a better features, I need to pay for LinkedIn. Yeah, that is that is correct. So that 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 is correct. That is true. Um, if you did want more access, uh, to like you know see who viewed your profile, or, or even to like LinkedIn Learning, or even like you know to more filters. Um, it will require you to upgrade to uh, to LinkedIn Premium. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so somebody in chat said, I was blocked for some time for following many people on LinkedIn. Why, please? Okay, so LinkedIn does have a, so going back to Yao's earlier point, where LinkedIn as a platform is trying to um, minimize uh, you know, any spam whatsoever. So if you follow a lot of people, um, LinkedIn would then flag that as, you know, suspicious, you know, or, or if you message or connect with a lot of people, LinkedIn would flag that as being suspicious. And so um, maybe that's the reason why you're blocked. And so we encourage people to only, you know, connect with somebody if you have a personalized message in your connection request. Uh, because if I send out 100 connection requests and nobody accepts it, then LinkedIn will flag that. But if I send out 100 connection requests with a personalized message, and even if it's say, I don't know, let's say 20 people accept it, that is not suspicious. And so um, the reason why you're likely blocked is because you try to um, follow many people at one single time. And uh, a lot of those people did not you know, accept the connection request or just denied it. So that's like the, uh, the reason. Right, I, I just want to add to the uh, LinkedIn learning uh, opportunities. Um, I, was, I noticed that um, um, as, as you, you share your interest in uh, certain jobs or certain opportunities, uh, LinkedIn automatically uh, sends you uh, access to free courses around that area. So let's say um, you're looking for supervisor opportunity or innovation manager opportunity or director opportunity. Um, after a while, LinkedIn sort of uh, sends you um, access to free learning uh, courses on, on that role uh, so that you can build your skills up uh, to be able to, so that when you land a, a job in that role, uh, you can be able to become effective. So I think that's that's how strong LinkedIn is uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know building your skills and also identifying areas of interest uh, for those who are on it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yao is is one hundred percent correct. That's what he mentioned regarding LinkedIn Learning. What other questions does anybody have? Anything on job searches? Anything on uh, growing your business? Um, what other questions do you do you have? Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah. My my name is Colin. Hi, Collins. Yeah, I want to. My question is on your support system. Uh, normally, you have. Um, so probably um, those people from LinkedIn connecting with you in your inbox and trying to sell um, services available at LinkedIn to you. I want to know, um, if you register on LinkedIn probably as a business, what are the support systems? Are these people going to continue to be with you, guide you all every step of the way, or a stop after um, registering uh, your business on LinkedIn? Yeah, it's a good question. So if you, so the question is like, um, if you're a business owner and you have a business page set up on LinkedIn, um, what kind of support does LinkedIn have to offer? Because yeah, LinkedIn would try to, I like, guess, sell you on, you know, whether it's like, you know, LinkedIn Premium or LinkedIn Sales Navigator or on LinkedIn, you know, ads to help grow your business. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the thing is, um, if you were to let's say upgrade to any of those different services, uh, LinkedIn would offer support based on, so it would be more so, it, it wouldn't be human support, it would more so be like, you know, we have a hub of resources, like a whole website of resources that you have access to now to help to grow your business. Uh, or we have like, you know, a, a chat support to help, you know, you do your self-serve to get to the answers quickly uh, to really, um, you know, grow your business. So support is available. Uh, it may not always be human support, but um, a lot of resources to help you um, be self-sufficient and more quickly uh, get access to what you need to support to, to, to function and run your business and grow it on LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What are the questions uh, does anybody have on anything? Okay. Um... Good afternoon, please. Emmanuel, um, I would like to know if um, the company has stringent uh, security measures to protect users from these people who um, often these people on these social media platforms. If there are uh, such measures that uh, set LinkedIn apart from other uh, social media handles. Mr. Emmanuel, can you just say that one more time? I, I, I couldn't I, I couldn't hear. Okay, so my question is that um, I would like to know if LinkedIn has stringent uh, security measures to protect users from um, people who often hate others uh, for their own interest. So um, if there are such measures that uh, set LinkedIn um, apart from other um, social media handles? Yeah, great question. So LinkedIn uh, for the, 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 the fifth year in a row now has been rated the number one more, most uh, secure uh, and trusted social media platform. So um, our peers are like Facebook, Snapchat, Pinterest, uh, TikTok. Uh, LinkedIn is the number one most, most secure um regarding you know member privacy and so um and maybe as a, as a follow-up takeaway i can send over you know uh how to make sure that you know if you want to be completely private on LinkedIn, you do have settings for that um so i can share what that looks like as well just to make sure that you know um it addresses your privacy and your security concerns Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what other questions do you guys have? It's a great question so far. Any other questions? Okay, um, if there's no other questions, um, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Be the last session, you be the third. Oh, sorry? Oh yeah, um, uh, we, didn't, we didn't hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Okay. Yeah, so um, there's no other questions. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed doing this session. Uh, feel free to add me on LinkedIn and uh, reach out if you have any questions later on. Uh, otherwise, I'll be sharing more resources uh, over the WhatsApp chat, WhatsApp um, message. And uh, yeah, don't feel shy to reach out. I'll be happy to help anytime, okay? Uh, God bless, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, too. Thank you, too.
Thank right. You. Um, okay. So, Stephen, by way of next uh, next steps, I just wanted to, uh, for everybody to know that uh, this is a three month um, master class, and we we're holding a, a session each month, and so we'll let everyone know about the next session, and also further information and, and resources uh, will be made available by email or the WhatsApp group. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Right. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Stephen. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed the session and it really impacted us. So we're looking forward to receiving more of these teachings. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, that's the way. Well, that's the way. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Hey, it's out to choose that. Hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone.